I never knew that taking a six foot eight man to park run could be so eye opening. Nor was I aware that back in March of 2023, this image would gain significance by capturing a chance meeting between myself and a man called John. John very kindly told me that he liked my videos, and a short while later, he attended his first jog on meetup. Standing at over two meters in height, John was easily the tallest person I'd met who harbored such a clear passion for running. While not quite John, at over six foot myself and having previously come close to 100 kilograms in weight, I knew the feeling of being considered a bigger runner, and so I was particularly intrigued by John's story. So I gave him a call to understand some more about his life and why he runs. I wanted to lose weight, so I was 17 stone. I picked up park run at 50. I started at 36 minutes for the 5k. Like so many who get into running, John chipped away at this time and brought it down significantly. On the phone call, we agreed to participate in a park run together, and there I would pace John to run as close to 25 minutes as we could, and possibly even dip inside. Most recently, for the course we'd chosen, he had run 25, 29 two weeks ago. But together, what could we do? I'm Harry Morgan, and this is Jog On. So here we are at Brooklands Park Run, which is located on an old motor racing course that was opened in 1907. Having announced we'd be at Brooklands that morning, Jog On Tops began to emerge. Prior to our warm-up, John and I had a quick chat about the course. It seems to me like this is as good a place as any to run quick times. It's pancake flat. It's a bit twisty turny in the middle. Does that tend to slow you up at all, or is it all right? There's a little go-kart track in the middle, but the turns are quite wide, so you just glide around them. <laughs> With our gliding plan in place and a strangely large inflatable bottle now around the assembled jog on crew headed off for a light run to warm up and see the 5k route. I glanced down and observed that my usual decent stride meant taking nearly one and a half steps to every one of John's. On a warm up, just to shake out a little bit with John, and then we get going in about 15 minutes. Your interview with Mark Symes is really good. I was thinking about this the other day about park run though. He said if people sat around a table and dreamed up park run, I'd be thinking that's never ever going to work. It wouldn't work. I still don't quite understand how it does work. But it works. Get you out of bed, community. I've met so many lovely people there. Yeah. Warm-ups done, the gathering runners signalled that this park run was close to starting. It's always at the start and the finish that I find that my height is, you know, different to others. John and I made our way over to join the crowd. You must have gone through your life with comments, I guess. Every day, including today, somebody says, mind your head. Every single day, mind your head. Wow. A doorway six or six. So I have to duck under every door. I don't fit in a bed, I don't fit in a shower. If I get in a lift, 99 times out of 100, somebody will say, oh my goodness, you're not tall, aren't you? Excited and raring to go, we were instructed to make our way to the Brooklyn's Park Run start line. No sooner were we standing there than it began. John and I had spoken about how he likes to start. I tend to set off really quickly because people are all at sort of armpit level and I can't see people below me. With flashes of electric orange in among Amongst the charging park runners, people poured over the wide open tarmac expanse. Jog on Ambassador Joe in front of me, a man's voice came from my left. Only Harry Morgan. Hello, hello, how are you doing, man? I'm like, I follow you every video. Oh, awesome, <laughs> appreciate it, thanks very much. For the first kilometre, the plan was for us to get going and stay at the pace. I will be perfectly focused. Another subscriber asked me, what are you doing today? Well, pacing 25 minutes at the moment, trying to get a rhythm going. What are you aiming for? 23. Awesome, man, have a good run. As Mr. 23 settled into his own pace, a gentleman passed us in gloves. There's a little go-kart track in the middle. Perhaps they were motor racing gloves with which he was planning to take a few places by driving the middle section. As I pondered whether Jogon could next bring out orange running gloves, I found that we were settling into a good rhythm. Okay, 300 meters in. John is looking great. This park run had one of the friendliest marshals I'd ever seen. Morning, well done. I did another five laps, don't worry. I'm just coming out. Well done, Rebels. Morning. John seemed to be handling the 25-minute pace well. Looking good. The corners like a Formula One track. Carving our way like two orange race cars, John just began to pick it up. Sneaking to about that 4.50 pace right now. What a joke. With the park run winding between the thick grass, I glanced at my watch to check our pace. John Bradbury taking the inside line. Beautiful flat course. With my training shoes tapping away beneath me, this 5K was well underway as a mystery hero passed us, bearing his 100 park run cape in all of its glory. You'll see in the middle there is what I would describe as the squiggly bit. Around this squiggly bit, different jog on crew could be seen pushing for various times and goals. Ambassador Kerry with her huge birthday balloon, Ian in his jog on cap. Jonathan Perkin, whose running had improved significantly, was going for his first ever sub 25k. Joe in her purple shoes, and then as one man gave the classic soaring eagle pose, John and I appeared. 
I don't think I've been put off by I'm too tall to run. I mean, every day I say, why am I doing this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the big inflatable bottle ahead of us, I gave a quick run update. It's a bit twisty turny, but John's looking great. And bounced over to catch him up. Knowing that this first kilometre would be a little sharp due to John's desire to evade armpit tenants, we entered the only wooded section of the five kilometre course. <laughs> Great park run. Perfect, John. Following John's size 12.5 running shoes, I reminisced on the issues that he experiences one wouldn't even think of. Another problem I have is tree roots. They're so far away, I can't see it. <laughs> we'll know from that second kilometre what adjustments we can make. Assuming that we could stay on 25 pace, the plan was to get a halfway and then cling on. The wide, dry grass landscape was witnessing 341 runners rolling their way to a line of cones which had been laid along the original start line. Meanwhile, John and I had hit 2,000 metres. So second kilometre have just ticked over in a perfect 4.59, which is smashing pace from John. We just needed to stay relaxed, but keep it on pace, pushing towards that 25 minute goal. See how close we can get to it and maybe even sneak inside. John stuck to me like glue as we rounded the cones and moved our way up along what used to be a runway. John's remarkable stride length meant he made 25 minutes look impressively steady as he simply didn't need to turn his legs over as quickly as others to cover the same amount of ground. On our phone call, John had shared with me his lowest moment when his running career had been in serious jeopardy. Because I ran every day, my doctor said, you're running yourself down. So I got bacterial pneumonia, lung scarring, and was in hospital for a week. Great running from John, looking really, really good. Shooting towards that 25 mark. With our electric orange tops fluttering in the stiff breeze, John and I pushed on with this effort that was only becoming tougher by the second. The big bottle now behind us, John had given me prior warning of what tends to happen in the later stages of his five kilometer attempts. At 3K, you'll see, oh, about 505, 506, 506. Seven, he'll say, right, we need to step up. But up to now, John was seemingly holding the target pace. Yeah, on that five mark, John's looking superb. And that's 3K and a brilliant 5.01. John is running a fantastic pace. Now it's about just holding for these last two kilometers. But would John's usual slowing of pace happen here? We've got to conserve the energy to try to chase down that 25 minute time. Come on, John. Can I make it at five minutes a kilometer or just under? Still inside, John, still inside. However, the look on John's face suggested that five minutes per kilometer was becoming more and more taxing. Nice. And I'll be shouting at you. Nice. Hey, what's my pace? <laughs> With token number one going to Jogon's Graham, next in was Jogon Jim in a rapid 1845. In the section of greenery, we were back under the trees as John requested nice, nice. five minutes flat. Back at the finish in a wonderful moment, Jonathan Perkin just sneaked inside 20 minutes to run a new personal best of 1956. We're nearly at 4K, John. I've never had somebody at my ear saying, move a bit, lift your legs. Nobody's ever said, go a little bit faster. So at the 4K mark, it's 5.15, 5.20. Might be game over. 5.05 right now, John. But it's not over yet. One kilometre to go. John bursting out into the sunlight. 510 pace right now. Keep the hammer down, John. John's been putting down some excellent kilometers, but we can't rely on that. It's still all important that we cling to that pace. John grimaced as Joe cruised into the finish in 22.03. But back along the course, John's pace was starting to slip. Still 510, John. Let's go, Adam. Final push. Come on. All the way, Adam. Come on. I turned to him, giving encouragement to keep pushing. Just as John had told me, it was this last section where his speed would always slow. The legs say, OK, that's, that'll do now. But John knew what was needed. Just keep going. That massive giraffe legs. Being six at six at 15, I was never good at 100 metres. I was never good at 800 metres. Right up there. Let's John. Much to my relief, we just picked up a tiny bit. This final 1,000 meters was crucial. Knowing that his personal best on this course was sitting at 25.29, I was desperate to keep John from slowing down. Having put all this work in to run nearly four kilometers at 25 flat pace, but John was not about to give up. I feel perfectly normal with myself and my height. I don't stoop. A friend at school said, always walk tall. With running, you just got to get out and put one foot in front of the other and just keep going. Breathing hard, John asked for the clock. Time. Time right now is 23.50. Come on, John. You know that feeling before running where it's like, what am I doing here? And then that feeling after running, I'm so glad I did that. 5.05. We were getting quicker again. Down to five minute pace. 24.30. Last bit, John. Come on. How close could we get? Brilliant. 5.04 there. All the way, John. Come on, John. Brilliant stuff, John. And just keep going. Keep pushing. 24.54. People see me as a marker. There's always a sprint finish when three or four people say, look, there's the big fella. I'm going to beat him to the finish line. I need to keep going. With more crew running to support John. Come on, John. We dug deep and pushed. Come on, come on, come on.
While we had just missed breaking inside 25 minutes, we'd taken 24 seconds off John's previous personal best at Brooklyn's Park Run. I had us at 25.05. His huge effort had produced a shining example of testing that preconceived notion of being too big to run. In the words of Mary Cullen, there's not one body type that equates to success. Accept the body you have and be the best you can be with it. Fantastic. I'm Harry Morgan, and this is Jog On. I'm Harry Morgan. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the like button, the share button, and the subscribe button, and the notification button. This has been Jog On. Thank you.